The first time I ever played tabletops uh, was my freshman year of college. I knew they existed, but I only really knew they existed in the form of like D&D, Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, up until that point, you know, I was the nerdiest girl in my school, um, mostly because I read comic books and played video games or watched my siblings play video games. Um, I was the one who introduced all my friends to George R. R. Martin while well, they uh, read Twilight. So when I got to school, you know, I saw a group of guys on the quad and I kind of knew them vaguely, but they were talking about playing a tabletop called New World of Darkness. And I heard tabletop and my mind went immediately to improv acting. Um, I was very interested in acting. I'd done a lot of it in high school and I did some of it in college, but I never wanted to be an actress. I just liked getting into other characters and kind of using it as an escape. Um, so when they said tabletop, I said, oh, I want to play. But I looked at the book and I went, oh, there's all these, this, this is a pretty cover, you know, it's a very pretty looking book. And I read the first uh, part of it, and it was kind of a uh, preface to how the game works. It was a short story, which basically explained that the system was this uh, gothic urban horror with, you know, vampires, werewolves, and things that go bump in the night. And so at first I thought it was like this story, but we had a character in the story, and I wasn't quite sure what that meant. Uh, and then I turn the page and the next chapter is all these rules of how to play and I was clueless. I had no idea what this meant. Um, I sat down with a guy and he started scribbling on the board of like how to make a character and I just couldn't get it. I knew we were putting numbers into things and somehow they corresponded to this librarian from Canada that I had in my head that I wanted to play. but. I looked at the sheet where they laid this all out and it just didn't make sense to me. But then we got to the first session and the GM was laying out the story. We were playing mortals, even though you can play vampires in the system, we were starting out as humans. And it gets to a point where, you know, it, uh, something crazy happens and I sit there and go, I think my character would scream right now. And I look at the game master and I go, can I scream? And he kind of looked at me like I was a little bit crazy in terms of like, yeah, of course you can scream, like you could do whatever you want. And so I said, okay, I'm not going to actually scream, but my character screams. And that was the first moment I realized like, yes, you have a character and you can do whatever you want within the boundaries of your character. But there was also the other factor of some, um, when we went to go roll, roll the dice, and by the way, you don't do it like this. Yeah, no. Um, the Because I'd put so many numbers and points into uh, the occult, because I wanted my character to be the one who knew everything that was going on, uh, I assumed, you know, hey, he. I asked a question, would my character know this? And I assumed because I had so much knowledge of it, that had given my character so much knowledge of it, I should know what it is. And he said, no, you have to roll. And I, I was confused because it's something that you should know, and but you can't, you have to roll to see if you succeed at knowing this thing. Um, and once I did my first roll, it kind of clicked of like, yeah, your character can do this thing, but whether they remember it or whether the, you know, you're climbing and the rock is slippery, you know, that that is what the dice are for. That is why it's a tabletop role-playing game, because you're not just improv acting, you're rolling dice to see what your chances are at succeeding at something. And that does sound a little confusing, I know it does, and when you play it, it makes a lot more sense, but it wasn't until I played that things started to click and I started to get it. Uh, and that was kind of frustrating as a new player, and I think it's still frustrating for people to try to break into it. And after a time, it the system started to get a little hackneyed. Uh, it was every we only played this one thing. I only played with this one group. 
Um, there, there was a lot of drama that happened. Some of it was my fault, some of it was other people's fault. And I just started to become really disillusioned about tabletops. Um, I was just tired of playing this one game. And the only other thing I could fathom playing was Dungeons and Dragons, but I personally do not like high fantasy games. Um, so I was ready to quit tabletops entirely. It didn't matter that I loved creating characters and I loved being in these stories. I was just didn't think there was anything else out there. But then I met my future husband and he introduced me to this new system called Unhallowed Metropolis, which is a, <laughs> a neo-Victorian uh, post-apocalyptic zombie uh, Victor I already said Victorian, but you get the point, you know, it's, it's oh, it, it's, it's steampunk, and I happen to love steampunk, so I was really excited to play. But as confusing as it was in the beginning to make a character, I was faced with the new challenge of creating a character within a new system, and it was just as confusing, and that in itself was really confusing to me because I was so used to building a character, shouldn't I automatically know how to build in another system. But then I realized it's kind of all similar. Um, you know, there is the building the character and there's the playing the game and they're all connected by rolling the dice. But to get back to my point was that I didn't know these things existed. I was so stuck in one system and to suddenly find a new system that I loved and I still love and a new group of people to play, like, that was very hard. Um, and again, I almost quit because I didn't know it was there. And I didn't know that there were so many other things out there. Like, if you can think it, it is out there and you sh can be able to play it. Uh, it's like Rule 34, you know, if you can think it, there's a porno out there. Yeah, if you can think it, there's a tabletop out there. But so many people assume that you have to twerk something to make it work. Tweak, not twerk. Not twerk. <laughs> you have to tweak something to uh, work it to what you're setting. Like most people take Dungeons and Dragons and try to make um, a system around that or a setting around that. But behind me are so many tabletops and my husband has a Google Drive filled to the brim with even more tabletops because it doesn't always work. But people want to play these new and different things. They just don't know they're out there. And people don't know how to get into them to begin with. And that's what we kind of want to do here. We want to create a series of videos to explain to new people what it means to come into the tabletop world because it's very, very confusing. And it's even confusing if you've already been in the world and you're trying to find a new group. It's hard to find those people and it's hard to fit in because there's so much you don't know about it that you have to, you know, sink or swim. And so many old tabletop people, they're so used to the way that they do things that they forget what it was like to be the new person and to have to basically learn one-on-one how to do it. Um, you know, just, I can even see it, you know, most, um, I found my first group in college and honestly, in college that's where you do find a group of people and you kind of play with them until the end of days. And for my husband, um, he found his group freshman year and by senior year they were playing their one game with their one group of people. And because they were so comfortable with each other, they didn't really feel like they needed new people. Not that they didn't want new people, but they had what they needed. And then here's my husband constantly wanting to bring new people into the fold and give p new people a chance to understand this. And, you know, you have people coming out and watching like Stranger Things and uh, Community where they have that D&D &D episode. And though people come out going, oh, I think I get it and I want to play it. There's a lot of misinformation that goes into that. A lot of it is kind of inside jokes a little bit and sometimes you just sit there and you go, well, that's not exactly how it works. And basing it off that, trying to break into the world is very hard, especially because players who've been playing forever have their way of doing things. And 
don't know how to explain it. And I saw that when I first started to play, when my GM looked at me like I was crazy, that I should have to ask if I could do this thing with my character right now. But you know what? There are so many people who have that same problem. They just don't know what it means to play, and they just don't know how to even find their group. And they want to. They want to join this world because it's a great world to be a part of. Um, I love it. My husband loves it. We want to share that with people to have them understand why this is important and why it's amazing once you are a part of it. So my name is Slaya. Um, this first video is sort of a prologue to our series, which we call Introduction to Tabletops. I hope you enjoy it and check in next time.